Hey, I'm Anthony Romano, and this video is titled, Kids Are in Ketosis, and what that means for you, what that means for kids who need to use keto diets, and kids that become athletic prodigies, and all the other links here. This is going to teach you a lot about how to implement keto as an adult, but also for people who do need it if they're children. So, there's a lot of interesting insights here, but let's get into them. But first, like the video, that will help YouTube show my content to more people, and also subscribe and follow me on Instagram. So, the idea for this video came from a question from Georges Mukou. I don't know if that's probably a short form for his last name, but Georges. He says, my child plays tennis, I believe, in this keto thing. What's the best way for her to get strong and grow? She is nine, and I want full benefits of keto. So, some of you might be thinking, wow, nine years old, that's young. Wouldn't it be a problem to start using keto? Okay, there's a few in, like things you need to understand here first. For starters, the whole reason the ketogenic diet was created and practiced was because it was used for children with epilepsy, okay? Because they did not want to fast to enter ketosis. They wanted to eat food and still maintain the benefits because children need to grow. This was done in a lot of studies from the 1920s, and we've known about this for a long time. Granted, the ketogenic diet exists naturally anyways, but just the implementation of the high-fat 80-20 keto diet was, you know, created because of that. That's another reason why people use that diet all the time. Keto just means no carbs, no sugar. Okay, so if you're not eating anything, you're not eating sugar, and that's the fasted state, which is a deeper level of ketosis, and that's what can help fix epilepsy. But of course, not everybody wanted to fast outright, and kids need to acquire nutrients. Okay, and also, if you think about the growth of carbohydrates in nature, they don't exist for almost half the year in wintertime. Okay, so everything is, the foods are seasonal, okay, and our metabolism is seasonal. Everything is seasonal, day, night, summer, winter, everything. Okay, so your metabolism is in some way meant to go for periods of the year with less carbohydrate available. Okay, fruits, grains, starches, they don't grow in the wintertime and your ancestors wouldn't have had access to them. So even if I can't say that, you know, fasting is something that every kid should do, we know that ketogenic metabolism is something that we are naturally have the backdrop for. It's built into us physiologically. And also every single kid is in ketosis. You are born in ketosis. You know, if there's one food we know we're meant to eat as humans, it's breast milk. Breast milk is ketogenic unless the mother is just pounding back Coca-Colas all the time. Okay. So the thing is we are meant to eat ketogenic food that, and every time you go to sleep, you produce more ketones. Watch my video on forcing ketosis. Your body forces ketosis at certain times of the year. If you're a woman during your cycle, there's certain parts where your body purges glucose. Okay. Anytime you go without food entirely and sugar specifically, it doesn't matter if you're not eating anything, you're producing more ketones. Okay. Cause ketones are the thinking out smart fuel. Carbs are the fight or flight fuel and your body can still make carbs during the ketogenic state But if you think about it in nature If you ran away from a bear and burnt out all your glucose your body has to preemptively start making more ketones in case You run out of the fight or flight fuel. You got to think and you got to outsmart the bear Okay, so this is something that happens, you know as you deplete your glucose and that's why it happens during sleep That's why it happens during athletic performance and on the topic of athletic performance, when you're a kid, you're running around all day, your, your metabolic rate is pretty high, okay? You're burning out all your glucose. You have so much growth hormone that you're liberating, you know, glucose from the body, okay? And that's when you're getting closer to making more ketones, even if you're not eating a ketogenic diet, okay? You have to realize this. I mean, think about like every relative you've had when you were growing up and they're like, oh yeah, you better watch out, kid, you know, bucko. Yeah, I had the metabolism too and I never had a single pound of fat, just like you. It's going to go away one day. That that relative is because back in the day, you had more access to fat metabolism, a higher ability to tap into fat stores. And we know from other videos I've made where I break down some game-changing studies that show you burn more fat when on keto after getting adapted. So this is something that everybody experiences. And you had a higher access to fat metabolism when you're younger because you're burning out your glucose more. Okay, you have to remember that. Lots of athletes would do this. So now, hopefully, you have the foundation to understand why I'm recommending keto diets for some kids and why I'm basically saying it's not unsafe, okay? So starting point here, most of the nutrients we need to grow are in the fatty foods, fat soluble vitamins, A, E, D, and K, and those foods tend to be packaged with the essential minerals we need, the iodine, the other things that we need for growth. They're packed with the B vitamins, the whole B vitamins and the right ratios. These are things that we need for growth and 
even though carbohydrates are not something that are the devil you don't have to cut them out for the entirety of your life but when you do cut it out you have to cut it out entirely and can that be beneficial for some people who need it therapeutically yes absolutely it can be beneficial to cut them out for a long period of time especially if they have you know epilepsy or something they have to cut the carbs out entirely for the majority of their life it can still grow adequately and perhaps even better because sometimes the brain will heal better if in the absence of sugar you'll access more autophagy better cleansing okay so there's a lot of benefits but i'm just ma mainly saying this so you understand that this is not just me being keto cult guy okay this is simply stuff that i've dedicated myself to for the past 10 years almost and coach people for for specific reasons just like this so the question from george his child plays tennis and she's nine and she was probably competitive enough that he felt compelled that he wants to help her become a better athlete. So great uh, insight as well from uh, Tariq, T. John. But my recommendation here was, okay, keto can definitely help somebody grow. Okay, you need the fats to build all your hormones. You need the fats to provide vitamins. These are things that we know, okay? Especially if you get them from high quality foods, you know, pasture raised foods organic foods they're going to be higher in nutrient density and devoid of other pesticides and things that are not good for you okay which again a lot of the carb foods you know you have to be selective with you can't just get you know carb foods that are you know sprayed with so much pesticide and stuff that's going to be worse for your kid okay again not demonizing carbs but you should get the starting principles here now funny enough this is how i got into keto when i was 14 okay i got into it to, to become a better soccer player at the time my thought process was simply okay uh, if I just get leaner, I can run faster than everybody. And if I start training lots of legs and my dad and I built a squat rack in my old house, then I could be faster than everybody. That was my thought process at the time. But I got into these things and then I got into more of the bodybuilding side of things. But it's absolutely something that I've experienced myself, but not from as, an age as young as nine, even though our bodies are still tapping into ketosis in some ways at that age. So I'm going to break down this question, but first some recommended reading for you. If you know a child that needs to use keto for therapeutic purposes, could be epilepsy, some of the thing. A good book is Keto Kid by Deborah Snyder. Okay, that's a book I've read because at this point, after doing keto for so long, I am trying to be the best source on it and basically telling you stuff you won't hear about it that much and by reading really weird books on it. Okay, so George's question. I said keto will absolutely help her potential in Korean athletics, but the best way for a young woman especially to start is with lots of fats for energy and hormone production. This is the best, you know, implementation for somebody who's growing lots, okay? We know their growth hormone is going to be high and they're going to be liberating glucose, right? Even think about when you're a kid, your most developmental stages are when you're a baby, right? Your, your body is p making so much growth hormone, pushing out so much glucose and accessing ketosis and growing in those states, getting breast milk that is ketogenic in most of the time and a little bit of glucose, right? If any. So here's the thing too. There's practicality with kids who do need to do ketogenic diets. Granted, if they have a condition like epilepsy, you need to minimize the, you know, presence of carbohydrates, even carb days, right? That's something they're going to have to n rely on an adult with, you know, proper medical oversight, etc. because this is liability disclaimer in case you do things wrong. You know, they're going to need help with implementing these things if they need it. But for most kids, if we're talking athletic, you want your kid to live their life and not feel restricted, okay? You don't want to re make people restricted because then they'll rebel against things. They're not going to understand the true nature of the practice and how beneficial it is for anything, okay? So, of course, carbohydrate days are going to be useful and strategic, okay? Especially if they're an athletic child. Uh, basically, with athletic prodigies, you know, they're going to have a good ability to use both carbs and fat. This is what keto adaption offers you. And that's why, you know, this is something that realistically I would turn into a full-on consultation. And, and I've consulted people on for athletic purposes, okay? So kids are going to be burning through lots of glucose, especially if they're training lots, like trying to be a competitive tennis player, okay? So they're going to need the fats to build hormones and get fat-soluble vitamins. They're going to want carb days here and there, but that depends on what the reason the kid is doing keto for, okay? So it, it needs to be focused into a lifestyle, which is how I kind of recommend things as a month of keto adaption phase, right? A pure keto, no cheats, nothing, right? And from there, then they can start, you know, after about a month or so, integrating some carb days here and there to get that metabolic flexibility, to get their liver used to making and ceasing glucose production in higher amounts and ketone production in higher amounts. And also creating the enzymes needed to break down fats and, and keto food and non-keto food. Okay? So the thing is too, they're going to need lots of protein. Again, the essential amino acids as key. And what foods tend to have the essential amino acids? The foods you eat on keto. Okay, you need lots of the omega-3s, which are going to be in high quality fish. Okay, things, uh, things like that. High quality eggs are going to have a little bit more. They're going to have some omega-6 omega as well. But high quality foods is key for people who are trying to be athletic prodigies. Okay, but the main thing is, 
you know, realistically, your brain should grow better if you are in a ketogenic state, because we know that the brain prefers to use ketones as fuel once they are adapted. Okay, there's great work on this from Stephen Kunan and also Mary Newport. This is techniques that I've used with some of my brain decline people or brain injury people. The brain can take up fats very effectively and glucose produces more pyruvic acid, more oxidative waste. So again, I'm not demonizing carbs, but there is efficacy for these practices for everybody, athletic people and children, okay? And the quickest, most beneficial thing without getting into a consultation here is again, focus on those foods, but focus on practicality for children. Okay. Kids are going to need an example, the book by Deborah Snyder. There's lots of recipes for making foods that are like cheesecake and stuff like that, but they're ketogenic. Okay. Lots of recipes that will help, especially for children who do need to be in ketosis all the time for therapeutic reasons like epilepsy, epileptic children who are non-responsive to medication stuff, they're going to need foods to keep them in ketosis and not as many carb days, if any, right? That's something where you're going to need to talk to the doctor about, of course, right? Because, you know, it's, it's risky for the kid. You never know where they might slip up. But in general, the fats are key for hormone production, for brain repair. They're key for nutrient density, specifically A, D, and K, and also getting the B complex vitamins, okay? Essential minerals, iodine, things of that nature, okay? These are things that you can look into deeper, but this is the quickest way to maximize athletic performance. And I'll touch upon my own experience in general too. Every funny enough, every year that I played competitive sports, I had gotten better the next consecutive year, even though we're playing in a more competitive environment with older ages. Okay. Again, it comes down to facilitating the growth by providing the fuel, the precursors for hormones. That's one way to go, especially because kids are going to eat a lot and they're going to run through a lot of glucose okay and glucose in excess can create more waste longer recovery times great work on this from again jeff volick and stephen finney but even work from tim noakes is a great way to look into the recovery aspects of too much carb usage and for those of you who don't know tim noakes the guy is really an icon because he was a carbohydrate based athletic performance scientist for almost 30 years probably and then he changed his you know, he's literally one of the reasons why those little glucose gels are available. And he changed his entire perspective years after when one of his professional athletes, Paula Newby Frazier, hit him up and said, Hey, what do you think of Volk and Finney's study on, you know, eating more fats? And he gave her, he didn't realize that she was going full keto. And then she became like literally the most accomplished athlete in triathlon Ironman history. Okay. Winning it like 16 times or something like that. This is crazy stuff. So athletes can absolutely benefit from this, especially in developmental phases. Okay. Look into these things. Hopefully this video gave you some breadcrumbs and go to my website for consults, coaching and programs. Okay. Thank you for watching. I'm Anthony Romano. Leave me some more questions down below. I'll do my best to get back to you. Peace.